All right, look, I know the title of this video is a little... Here's a th world anime fan here to tell the population how cool and special anime is. It sounds kind of silly, but hear me out. I spent most of my formative years in a small town in the Midwest. The kind of town where anything deviating from the default settings was not going to have a good time. Having a hyper-conservative family who gave me books like The O'Reilly Factor for Kids to Read contributed to that and sort of set me apart from the wider world. It wasn't common for me to see any sort of LGBT anything around me. Despite years later, many of my friends coming out as gay, lesbian, trans, non-binary, etc. Basically, whatever part of the alphabet mafia you can think of. In talking with some of these friends, we eventually get around to how we were closeted until after leaving that town and realizing that we weren't as alone as we always thought. We had just been in an environment that didn't support who we were. During this whole time growing up, I was surrounded by influences that tried to reinforce a rigid idea of what it meant to be a woman, a man, or just what was a valid type of relationship. You know the only valid type of relationship, the kind where you constantly joke to your friends about how much you hate your spouse. Now, despite all of that, I had this vague idea of how it all was kind of and it all started with Sailor Moon. For anybody who wasn't around for or just didn't watch the original dub in the United States, it got kind of silly sometimes. The names of the characters were made to sound more American. They got voice actors who made these just absolutely off the wall choices. What's wrong with you? Flunk another chest? Uh-uh, nothing like that. I'm just really worried about Molly, you know? She's been totally depressed and I don't know how to help. Huh? Then later, let's go see the new Sailor V movie. You feel up to it? Yeah, it's about time, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Sailor V, my favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching the new dub or Crystal will never sound truly right to me because Molly's voice doesn't sound right without that horrible accent that she did. Also, I can't stop calling her Molly, even though I know that is not her name. The biggest changes made to the story, though, that actually impacted things were changes made to the villain character Zoisite from early on in the show, and then much later when Haruka is introduced to her relationship with Mishiru. Zoisite was in a gay relationship with fellow villain Punzite, although for some weird reason, they changed his name to Malachite in the original dub. For that same dub, there was so much concern over showing a same-sex relationship to the intended young audience that they just straight up made Zoisite a woman. Ah, buzz off, kid, before I get angry. I said leave him alone! But I'm not finished. Later on in the series, when Sailor Uranus and Neptune show up, they couldn't exactly make Uranus a man, despite her often masculine presentation, so instead, they made them... cousins. Which made for really interesting scenes like this one, where they're basically f***ing, but in a PG way. Hey, what is it? Haruka, it'll be alright. No matter what, I'll always love your hands. Cousins. It gave me really confused ideas about familial relationships. As I got older and the internet became a bigger fixture in my life, I discovered online fan communities. RIP my social life. It was through these that I had this earth-shaking realization in my little brain that those characters weren't what I had thought they were. By this point, I had moved to the small town where I finished out my years into adulthood. By starting my life online, I went from being isolated from anything not heteronormative to suddenly finding out that two characters in my absolute favorite show were gay. And honestly, most of the Sailor Scouts are at least bi icons because... Look, Usagi is really dancing. Haruka seems like a really good leader. She's so lucky. I'm going next. Hold on. We should arm wrestle to see who goes next. How about we just do a round of rock, paper, scissors? Come on, girls. Rock, rock paper? And suddenly my whole world looked different. Being gay wasn't this thing that other people in some far off city did. 
It was characters I loved. It could be people I loved and it could even be me. This is why I'm such an advocate for things like marginalized groups being more widely represented in media. For some of us, that's our only window into a world outside what our families let us see. Especially growing up when I did without the wider access to online communities. Arka and her masculine presentation and her clothing style was my first look at a woman who didn't fit into the rigid binary that I was taught to expect from the women in the media that I watched or read. Or it was at least the first time that characterization wasn't a caricature of a lesbian that you're supposed to laugh at or be disgusted by. What really made it hit me though was seeing her shift from a more masculine look to a more feminine one and seeing her be comfortable in both. I had spent my life to that point rejecting anything overtly feminine. And I kind of thought that if I was one, I couldn't be the other. It helped show me that gender performance is fluid and not set in stone. When I was a little older, I watched Oran High School Host Club, and that was even better. In the show, Haruhi becomes a member of the host club and pretends to be a boy working for them to pay back a debt. Once the whole club finds out that she's a girl, some interesting discussions happen framed by the antics of the other club members. Haruhi repeatedly reminds the boys that gender roles are meaningless through her words and actions. She doesn't care about whether people perceive her as masculine or feminine, and she enjoys presenting herself both ways. Her father is a cross-dresser and entertainer. Despite being an extremely emotional person who's a bit over the top compared to Haruhi's more reserved nature, he's shown to be a doting and loving parent. He isn't shown to be a monster or disgusting or weird, even though he doesn't fit into what some people would think of as a normal father. For someone who grew up in an area where that kind of behavior was ruthlessly bullied, it was shocking to see, but also really cool. It challenged the way I had been taught to think of feminine presenting men. Haruhi did the same move as Sailor Uranus, where she would switch back and forth between traditionally masculine and feminine looks, and she was comfortable in both of them. Eventually, I started to cosplay. I finally felt comfortable changing into a more traditionally feminine look because I didn't really feel like doing so would erase part of me that preferred traditionally masculine looks like I had before. I even had my first experience with they, them pronouns through anime and manga. I was big into Soul Eater. Not surprising considering I also owned a pair of these. I only really got rid of them like two years ago and I kind of missed them. When Krona was introduced in Soul Eater, I, like many of the people I knew in real life, was confused. Was Krona a boy or a girl? Their pronouns didn't really clarify it and they dressed in a really androgynous way. Eventually, because of the story I'm about to tell, I found out that Krona was neither. (sighs) There was a Soul Eater trivia panel at... (sighs) think Anime St. Louis? Maybe? Pretty sure it was Anime St. Louis. It was back in probably 2010 or 11, and the girl cosplaying as Seal from Black Butler in his party dress, because that's what everybody cosplayed him as, was running the trivia, and she asked the trivia question, is Krona a boy or a girl? And someone from the crowd answered neither. The girl running the panel very snidely said, no, Krona's a girl. I looked it up later because the crowd didn't seem to agree with her, but it was her panel, so she moved on. Anime conventions are a lawless wasteland with no oversight. Krona was, in fact, they them. So again, for me, who had never really encountered that concept before, I had this character I liked who I started calling they them. Later on, when pronoun discussions started to dominate online discourse, I didn't really see what the problem was because I already had experience with a person not using gender pronouns. Granted, it was an animated person in a Hot Topic goth show about people who can turn into guns. But still, like I said in the beginning, it was pretty much unheard of where and when I grew up to meet actual people who didn't use she or he. I eventually met actual real people too, but not until I left that town in my early 20s. That was when a lot of my friends who also left started to come out. And I realized that I wasn't as alone as I thought I had been that whole time. With only anime characters to show me what was possible. The anime characters helped me get through that period of my life where I felt like I was alone. And for that, I will always be grateful. I've shit-talked my hometown a lot in this, but I do want to say it is much different now. 
It's still a little podunk town in the sticks and has all of the problems that entails. But it is more common to see people who are openly LGBT and that is pretty neat. Also keep in mind after all that, that I am not saying this is everyone's experience or that I have the perfectly correct view of these characters. This is just about how they made me feel and change as a person. There are so many other examples that I could give or stories that I could tell about my hometown or weird anime convention experiences. These examples though are the most relevant today. Anime is cool and awesome and you can quote me on that. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave me a like so that the YouTube algorithm doesn't swallow me up. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button. And if you want to help keep me in my Crunchyroll subscriptions, go ahead over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash writingwomen and join for as little as $2 a month. It's pretty cool. Or you can join and, you know, be at a higher tier if you, if you feel like it. That'd be pretty neat too. Thank you to my current patrons, Mary Doc Brandybuck, Miss Psycho, Amy Chu, aka The Doctor, Lord Butterbutt, Bruce, Red, Kirsten, Olivia, and Mark. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.